Hello? I think it's working now. At least I'm getting some input. Awesome. No, it's hello. Uh, so, um, Substance Painter Basics. Um, yeah, I will check my email after this. Uh, Bobby Boy. One, two, one, two, one. <laughs> Best name ever. Um, so, I want to do Substance Painter Basics tutorial. So, I'm also doing this for YouTube. Um, so, I can upload this afterwards. So, we'll just start right. So, again. Um, a lot of people assume or uh, uh, people start in the wrong way so people say here like I'm gonna open a file um, this doesn't work because it only works for actual substance painter files so if you want to make a new file you need to go to actually new and then actually click on new new there you go if it works yeah so the template uh, this is confusing for a lot of people right so by default we always use the PBR metallic roughness unless you want to do something fancy for example, if you want to do a character, then you want to use these uh, uh, SSS versions, so subsurface scattering. If you want to um, target Unity 5 or Unity in general, then you use Unity 5 or Unreal Engine. Um, but by default, we always use the PBR Metallic Roughness version here. So click on it, select your file. In this case, I'm going to go for my house one. Um, this part over here, create a texture set per UDIM tile. Now, if you don't know what an actual UDIM is, then don't touch it. Uh, if you have cameras in the scene, then you can also import your cameras from Maya. I suggest you don't do that, just to be sure. Uh, document resolution, you can, you can go up to uh, 4000. Uh, in general, I use 2K, uh, unless it's for like a character or a very big building or a very big gun, for example, then 4K is fine. In this case, I'm going to go for 2K. A normal map, um, Unity uses DirectX, under the engine uses OpenGL, so it's just, it depends on what you're targeting at. So in this case, I'm going to leave it to DirectX. You can import um, big maps or already um, maps that you baked in, for example, ZBrush. Then you just click OK and then you should be able to get this. Okay, so this is my building. Um, and first thing you always, always need to do right before you start doing anything at all, you, you need to go to your texture set settings. Scroll down a little bit and then go to big mesh mesh big mesh maps and just in this case my output size should be should match the size of your actual texture uh, so I'm gonna go for 2k and just hit bake and just wait a little bit it shouldn't take too long um, usually when you have a low texture uh, low texture quality it's used because of the tiling it's too big um, I'll show you in a bit how that actually means and if I can actually get in Okay, done there you go so now you can see right the all these maps here are filled in it's done by substance you don't have to do anything about it you can just leave it you, you don't have to touch it anymore if you want to add extra channels for example like an opacity channel you can click on the channels over here and just add the plus and then go for uh, the opacity here or displacement mapping blending mask anything you want you want to add it's in there but for usually these five are more than enough so if forever it's fine so i'm going to go for to my layers again so this works like photoshop or any other painting program and down here is the oh not like that crap like this <laughs> i fucked up so this is your actual um settings for your brush in this case you can actually set the size of the brush here the flow of the brush uh opacity and the spacing and also the size jitter and other fancy stuff that you want to add but for now i'm just not going to touch it so i'm gonna start right so i'm gonna go to my shelf over here you got a material and a smart material now the difference between this this will work for everything and this one will only work for when you've baked your uh, materials so if you can only use the smart materials if you've baked your texture set settings so over here otherwise these do not work these do not actually function properly so make sure that if you want to use your smart materials that you actually bake all the mesh maps and also you can change the setting for the quality of the size so 4K, you can actually uh, downscale afterwards. You, if you textured everything, you can up, you can upscale to 4K, and everything will uh, scale with it. So I'm gonna go to my layers here again. I'm gonna find a good smart material. I'm gonna gonna find. I'm gonna start with a wood one. Uh, so I'm gonna add wood here, for example, on these parts over here. So I'm gonna find a wood material. I'm also gonna show you how to import one as well. So I'm gonna find a wood walnut. Actually, I got some trees here somewhere. I'm gonna find my. Park. This one looks good. Things. So I'm gonna drag it here, 
and it's gonna fill up the entire object. So see this this quality is super bad. It's way too big, so you need to check out the actual scaling. So this looks really awful. So I'm gonna go down here and into my scale here you can actually tile it even more. And now you can see it actually starts improving quite a lot. So if you have it like this, it's gonna be huge, right? You can get really bad results here. So in this case you wanna make sure that you scale up. So it actually matches the scale of the actual objects. I'm gonna go even higher, something like I don't know, it's the 12. I think they will look okay. And it's just actually I don't like the wood though, but I'm gonna delete it. Let's see if I got got more wood. I think there's also wood. That's even worse. <laughs> Let's see, do I have any other woods lying around? Again, on uh, shared.substance.com, you can actually download a lot of free materials, three different woods, um, or anything else that you want to use. If I hope it doesn't crash. Oh, I just dropped something. Wait for it. Takes a while. See again, this is really bad quality, but uh, if I up the scale to quite a lot, it's going to be a lot better. So I'm going to do the same thing here. See, oh, it's really slow. Holy shit. Again, this is not that great, so I'm going to delete it. It's just finding the one that you can like is the most, most difficult thing about everything, in my opinion. Um, so we start off with a block out of the colors, and then we're going to add more detail. But first, I want to find my good, decent looking wood. I'm going to up the scale again, so you get a little bit more. This looks uh, okay ish. Again, I'm mostly looking at the color, like this really height over here, right? It really sticks out. You can actually fix it in the end. So I'm just for now, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And then I'm gonna add a mask here. So I don't want everything to be wood. So I can actually use a white mask or a black mask. Now white mask means that you have to um, select stuff that you don't want to be wood. And if you add a black mask, you mask out things that you want to be wood. So in this case, I'm gonna go for a black mask. Doesn't really matter which one you use, but it's a little bit easier. So in this case, I can start painting, for example, right? I can paint on, okay, I want this to be wood and this not to be wood. But it's a little bit tedious and not very exact. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for my settings over here. This is your polygon fill tool. And in here, you can find the settings again. So this is by the triangle. So I can click here and add a triangle, mask up a triangle, or by face, or by object in this case, or by UV is a little bit easier, right? I'm, I'm gonna go for UV. I'm gonna click gently, see if I can get it done. Now you can see right that my window here only has one view. If you have multiple views, you can you can switch by them by using F1 is the default one, F2 on your keyboard is the full view, and F3 is just a UV view. I'm gonna go for F2 because I prefer. I I don't care about this view at all. I, it's it's for me. It's just a waste of space. I'm gonna go hit F2 again and go back to my actual single view. So we can fix this bumpiness by going into our base color over here. Just click on base color, then you can go to height. Then you can actually adjust the opacity here if you want to. So I can like lower down quite a lot. But I also need to make the scale even higher. I've seen it already. You don't want to go too high though. At this time, you can see right, I can get a lot of noise here. So I want to make sure I don't get that much noise. Of course, I can also rotate it to the way I like it. Let's do it horizontal. That's kind of funky. You can also offset it on the X and the Y. In this case, it's not really that important though, but you can. Okay, so I've got to continue masking out. So again, on my UV, I'm just going to click here. I want this to be wood and this to be wood. So I generally use by UV, unless I want to be um, specific by making, for example, patterns on cloth. That's a little bit easier to do it by whoop, face, for example. This I'm gonna just keep on clicking. I wanna make this wood as well, and this and this. Bit boring. I'm gonna make the door a little bit different, so I'm gonna not mask that in. So in this case, it's it's just f again finding the color scheme that you like. I'm just gonna keep clicking here for a second. Oh, too much. This one as well. Nah, let's do this one as well. Actually, no, nah, it's not. Wood, 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 wood. There you go. Let's do this wood as well. It's kind of cool. And this as well. Okay. Easy. So I can exit this again by either clicking here on my actual texture or 
by just clicking a different on uh, different objects. So in this case, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna grab my brush, and then we're gonna go for the next one. So I'm gonna go for the actual house over here. Oh, I forgot one. Never mind. Oh, sorry. Click and click. There you go. Okay. So let's make a new one. Um, we just uh, went for the height, right? So the actual height you can adjust settings here as well. But you can also do for normal roughness and metallic. You can also view them, right? So if you hit C on your keyboard, C for Cornelius. You will actually cycle through your channels. In this case, this is the base color. It shows you as well, base color, then the height, and then the roughness, and then the metallic, normal, and normal plus height mesh. And you can go back here by pressing M on the keyboard, or just go from here as well. So you can you can also view all these different um, mesh maps. Um, it's not really that important for now. If you want, you could you can go through them. In this case, I'm going to go back to my material here. Hang on. Cool, so what's next? We're gonna do the actual house. I'm gonna find a plaster here or something. I should probably have a plaster here or concrete. Something that's not really that busy. Oh, this is kinda cool. Let's go for the ancient ruins. Just, I'm just gonna drag it in here somewhere. It doesn't really matter where I put it. Uh, be because we're, we're gonna match it out anyway. Much better. Okay, so again. It looks really bad you can you can almost count the pixels in this case this is a folder right so if i click on the actual folder it will open it then i can find all stuff i need so in this case it's concrete simple this is the color here and you can turn them off you turn them on in this case i want to look for these objects here but i'm just going to scale everything so it's scale again let's go for 10 for example let's do 10 here as well or something like that this one is fine this one there it is so in this case, this actually has a mask here as well, so it actually has some levels, which you can also use, but in this case, I'm going to go here and again, change it. You see, it doesn't change that much, because this is actually blocked out by using a mask, so I'm going to click on the mask here, and then you scroll down here, and you can see it's just an actual mask, but then you open up here, and you get two new ones, so I'm going to click here. This is based on image input, and this is actually probably a grunge map, which is a texture. If I change this one, you can see that these actually start changing a little bit better not done yet but you can tweak it till you like you like it so I'm gonna go a little bit higher okay let's see if we can do anything else here so this one as well again so this is the color maybe let's actually lower down the opacity a little bit maybe set the multiply so this works the same as in Photoshop a little bit less maybe there you go and then again we're gonna do the same thing here so I'm gonna click on my object over here and I'm gonna go to my mask add a black mask because I only want to add something here so I'm going to again, click on the polygon fill make sure I'm set the UV and just click on the actual house itself this part here as well of course here and here oh and here okay as you can see right the lighting is over on this side so if, if you want to change the lighting you can hold shift and right click and drag and then you can actually change the lighting setting here which is a little bit easier if you want to like check out for different angles so in this case you can view it around here like this so this looks pretty okay it's still a little bit boring but we'll get to that so if you want to change the overall color here I can actually go in here and maybe I want to make this one a little bit more white for example a little bit more value here you can make it a little bit wider for example here this actually looks okay a little bit more Maybe same here as well. Let's go even lower on the opacity. There you go. Looks pretty good. Pretty good. So the roof, let's do the roof for, for that second now. So I'm gonna find my roof tiles. Over here I have a roof tiles material that I made myself in Substance Designer. So it's called Roof Slate. Again, I'm just gonna drag it in. It doesn't really matter where I put it though in this case, but I'm just gonna put it here. And then you get poof, roof tiles. Now this side here is okay, right? In terms of the direction of the, the tiles, this part here is <laughs> is flipped. So first thing though, I want to find the scale. Maybe I want to make it a little bigger. I can lower down the scale in this case, maybe like 0.6 or something. That's huge, 0.8 maybe. That's better. Again, we're gonna mask it out. So I'm gonna again add a black mask. Click here and add it. In this case, I don't want to use this side over here. 
because if I not turn to black then again it's gonna be flipped so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna use my face mode here I'm gonna set it back to white I'm just gonna add it you can also just do it like this real fast it's a little bit dirty but we can always unmask it so I'm gonna go here there we go and I'm gonna keep this side over here like this Okay, we've added too much I'm gonna go for my color black again UV I don't want this don't want this and this or this or this oh I wanted <laughs> I wanted that sometimes it will be annoying to actually select stuff here there we go and this part of here that side again this is just the blocking out right you just want to find the colors that you want to use for your actual texture this is the final one yet of course maybe also not this part here or this part just gonna track select find something that we don't need okay we should add this one here again so I'm gonna go back to my white grab this one and again unmask this part over here so a little bit like trying to find the parts that you want to add and which part you don't want to add I want this one I think this is okay this is okay this is okay and then I'm gonna copy copy it so I'm gonna hold alt I think this actually works alt and then drag so that will actually make a duplicate of this and then I'm gonna rotate my entire thing here I'm gonna uh, remask this I'm gonna in this case I'm gonna add this part over here and then I'm gonna unmask the other side so I'll just make a box selection again each rough then I'm gonna rotate my entire texture by 180 degrees so this is just in degrees then you get the same thing on this side which is pretty good and then again we're gonna add the mask here just clicking again it's a lot of clicking to be honest and then again we're gonna do box selection here because I'm lazy same here just a lot of clicking and then I can unmask this I don't want this one I don't want this one or that one that one and I hope here as well the parts fucked up as well and again on the inside okay oh don't want this bit tedious but and again if you want you, you can still change the scaling of, of all the tiles if you want to but. so one thing though you can notice that it's super shiny right so the roof is super shiny look at this it's super it's too much so what I can do is actually make it less shiny by adding a new fill layer so this is a fill layer over here and then only use the roughness so you can actually paint on a color height rough material uh, metal and normal in this case I only want to paint on a roughness I'm going to turn off color turn off height metal and normal and then we're gonna change here so if it's white it's super rough therefore it's, super, it's very matte if it put it all the way to black it's super smooth therefore it's super shiny so I'm gonna find like a space in between here something like this maybe then again I'm gonna add a black mask on this and I only want the roof to be filled so now the roof is less shiny see it's still a little bit shiny which is fine but not that shiny as it was before it's fast, it's furious, and it's awesome. So, oh, I fucked up a mask here. I'm sorry. So I'm gonna again fill my grab my tool, make sure it's black. There you go. Okay. Okay, let's do the rocks. I've got some rock wall here. I fixed. I actually got some here as well. Bricks, bricks. I don't want bricks. I don't want birch either. Uh, let's find one. Then I like this is pavement. I don't want pavement. Uh, stone. So I'm gonna grab it here, fill it in, throw it in there. <coughs> Again, super bad quality. I'm gonna up the skill here. Then you can see it's actually not that bad anymore. The height is still ridiculously high. I want to change that. Um, I can actually put it up there because this is this is the one that I, I made myself but uh, yeah I can actually share my uh, roof tiles uh, material on for everybody to use yeah I'll I'll, uh, I'll share it that's actually a good idea 
<coughs> so I'm gonna a little bit lower again I'm gonna black mask this just gonna grab all the stones that I added and then I'm gonna fix the height map because it's way too much it's way over the top bit tedious maybe we can actually do this faster in the UV map I think we can I'm gonna do it like this there we go does it actually work for some reason I cannot do it from this here oh, this is so annoying Oh. I was hoping I could cheat, but I cannot apparently. A lot of clicking. Nope. Fuck. Okay, this is just blocking out the colors of my actual object. I'm not going to do all the colors because that will take too long. I don't want to want to bore you guys to death. There's a lot of clicking. Oh, too much. And there we go. Okay. So again, right, the height map is way over top. So I'm gonna go to my height channel again. Find my uh, layer in this case stones. I'm gonna lower it down quite a lot. Still a little bit there, but not over the top. Again, you can also check it by pressing C. In this case, I'm gonna go for my height map. If I put it back to 100, you get this. In this case, I want to be a little more subtle, so I'm gonna like use a setting here. And maybe even still change the actual tiling itself. So I'm gonna go for maybe like 25. There we go. A little better. Oh, actually, this is a UV error. I think. Ooh. I did. I think I fucked up. No. It's fine. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do the actual here as well. So I'm gonna import a substance that I uh, downloaded from the internets from Substance Share. So I've got it here. Um, it's an SPS, SPSAR file. In this case, I just want to use the SPS file. So I could just drag it in here. In here somewhere. Or oh, uh, the SPSAR file. Yeah, SPSAR, sorry. And then you get this window, right? And you can, um, you have to define how you want to import this. In this case, I'm not going to go for a base material or procedural. And I'm going to go for base material. And then do you want to import it to your current session? So but, so when you close it, it's going to, well, be gone. To the current project that we're working in. Or the shelf. In this case, I want to do it for the shelf. So it's going to store it here forever. Then import it, and it's going to be here. So there it is. Then we can actually start using it. So I'm going to drag it in here somewhere and then we can see what it actually looks like I have no idea just download it from the internet way too much way too big I'm gonna get just the scale to like it let's, let's see what we, we can do we can actually add circles here it's kind of cool do one more circles yeah I want to go less advanced as always good so I can make it more rough apparently let's make it a little bit more rough or less rough there will be a little more contrast and roughness. And this is a nice material to be honest. It's nice. Okay. Again, I'm gonna mask it out black mask. I'm gonna grab my door here. Oh, should probably do a white. There you go. Yeah, I did some bad masking here. You can see there is much better. Here as well apparently. Ooh, this is a UV error. Ooh, I'm so bad at this, apparently. Okay, close enough. So, this is glass, right? So I'm gonna show you how to fake this. Um, we ch uh, when it comes to gaming, for example, we just fake uh, glass. We actually don't have actual glass, because uh, glass would be transparent, therefore we can see inside the building. But there is no inside the building, right? It doesn't exist. So I'm, go I'm just gonna fake it, so I'm gonna make a new fill layer. Um, with everything in it except for normal and height because I don't need them I'm gonna mask it out immediately I'm gonna grab my windows over here it's been masked out same here and you can't see it yet but it's there trust me just gonna mask it and then we're gonna change it so I'm gonna change my color to black so glass in games is black and then I'm gonna lower down the roughness so it's super shiny and then you get a perfect reflection of it maybe a little bit, a little bit more rough so you get a little bit like a glass idea um, we don't have actual glass in games so it's way too expensive for movies you can but then it means you also have to model the inside of the building 
which I have not done. Um, not necessarily because I'm lazy, but more like, yeah, it's a waste of time. That's why it's not there. I'm gonna actually do this one here as well. That's kind of cool. So it's about being efficient, right? In essence, you can be and adding a interior to a building that you will never see. It's like, yeah, why would you do that? So I also added some straw. Yep, I did some straw roofs. I'm gonna use straw for that one. So I'm gonna grab my roof reed. I don't know what's called in English. It's really, really bad. I'm gonna up the scale to quite a lot. Now you see it turns a lot better. Four, I'm gonna rotate it so it's actually facing down. It's gonna be 90 degrees. Maybe a little bit less scale. Let's do three. There you go. And then again, we're gonna mask it by black mask. I'm gonna grab this part over here, this part, this part, and this part. Now, if you want to be super accurate, you have to do this part here separately. So make sure that everything actually follows the same direction. But for now, it's gonna be okay. So glass is done. It's a bit filthy. It's, it's way too simple for now. But this is a start. So we've got everything colored in, right? So we have now got the base colors, and they look okay. I mean, I'm not not a big fan of it, but it's good. So I'm gonna change some stuff here. So I'm gonna make my wood a little bit darker because right now these two colors here are too similar. So I'm gonna add a filter over here. I'm gonna add a HSL perceptive. So this is just the uh, default use saturation. I'm gonna actually make it a little bit darker, so I get a little more contrast between the plaster and actual wood here. And it looks much better. It looks okay. I think I'm gonna do the same thing for the door as well. So I'm gonna find my door here, which is gonna be this one. Now usually though you would actually name your uh, layers here, but since I'm gonna kind of lazy, I'm gonna again add the H. SL perceptive and I'm gonna lower down the lightness a little more so you get the little bit more contrast in the actual colors you can do the same for the actual stone here as well so I'm gonna grab my stones here as well I'm gonna grab filter again same thing maybe a little bit darker here as well or a little bit lighter if you want to maybe shift the U give it a nice color <laughs> or not I made it a little bit darker little bit just a smidge there you go okay so the glass right it's super boring so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new layer I'm only gonna paint the roughness on it so I'm gonna turn everything off I'm gonna grab a new brush so I'm gonna find my brushes over here I'm gonna grab uh, let's do dirt 3 which is a nice brush I only want to paint the roughness so I just want to add, add a little bit of um, dirt on this by adding or changing the roughness. I'm going to go for super rough here. I'm going to zoom in while holding control and uh, my right mouse by dragging to the left or right. I can change the size of it by holding control and right click and moving up and down. You actually increase the hardness of it. So you can increase like the how many dots you have and then you can start painting on it. You'll see immediate difference. It's too much, but I'm going to just tap it. Just want to be a little bit dirtier, All right? A little bit dirtier because nothing is clean in, in, in the real world. It's too much right now, but we can always lower down the opacity, which is exactly what we're going to do. So I'm just going to add some dirt here, just paint on it, just tap it, tap it like you mean it. There you go, on the side. Especially with, um, especially with shiny objects, right? It's really important that you add detail in the, in, in the roughness map. Uh, color is not that not that interesting. Uh, it's 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 the roughness map that actually makes things look interesting. So this is way too much. You can see, I'm gonna go to my roughness here. I'm just gonna lower down the opacity a little bit. So I get a little like a, it's a smudge, like someone touched the windows with the, with the dirty hands. Bastards. You can also of course change the actual um, method of how you actually blend the layers, but that for now it's good. Maybe a little bit less, actually, even more. That's a little bit better, right? So you can see there's a little bit of detail on it, not too much, but it's there. Same for the roof, right? It has a giant um, uniform roughness, which doesn't happen in real life. So we're also going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to add a new layer again. I'm going to make it super rough here. I'm just going to paint with a different brush. I'm just going to grab, I don't know which one. Let's do dots. 
make it bigger let's do dirt 3 actually or dirt 2 let's just do dirt 2 let's go cool. again you can just paint on it so i'm gonna make it rough then you can start painting on it you can see it actually adds a little bit more detail in the in the highlights it's so it's solid though but it's there but you can also go here and change the spacing between the brush so just check it out here if you add more spacing you can actually paint easier so i can just drag here and you can see that the spacing changes if i lower it down you get a single stroke if i make it really high you get like once in a blue moon you get a smidge there i'm gonna find it here i'm just gonna paint it a little bit again we're gonna mask it out so it's all good again we're gonna grab a different variation here again just gonna paint on it maybe even darker here which is kind of cool just blend it like you mean it then you can see you get f a little bit more variation here last one is way too much i'm gonna undo this oh even maybe a little bit blacker as the other side as well it doesn't have to be like perfectly symmetrical you, you kind of want to avoid that at all costs to be honest again just pick a color here just draw on it like you mean it and again same here and it's all about adding variation you can see right if i do it like this you, you can see the variation here in the highlights which is way more interesting than if i turn this off now it's just simply uniform and then you add more detail and the roughness actually becomes a little bit more interesting but that's the goal of this um maybe also here as well on the sides it's also part of the roof and then in the end we're going to add, add a mask again so if you fucked up it's fine i'm just going to add a new mask on it so you can be like super rough with your drawings and your painting it's going to be okay so i'm going to add again add a black mask i only want the roof to have this dirt on it so there you go See a little more interesting to look at than it was before. Okay, let's do the same thing here for the plaster. So this one has a little bit more detail in it, but of course you can always add more. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that you can do to add a little bit more interesting uh, roughness to this. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to add a generator on this. And I only want to use the roughness in this case. I'm going to add dirt. In this case, it only adds to the roughness. So I can now turn it on <laughs> you get a nice plastic looking house. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna invert it. Um do I wanna invert it? Yeah no, I actually wanna leave it like this. So I am gonna turn on tri planer though. This is always really good, just use it by default. And um I can explain it but they'll take long as time, so I'm not gonna do it. So again, I'm gonna go to my roughness here. Maybe use multiply or oh oh god, don't say let's do a linear dodge add. Let's not do the inner dodge and let's do a normal map. And just slow it down a little bit. Actually adds here as well to the glass, which is kinda cool. Okay, so if you turn it off and on, you get a little bit more variation. It's subtle though, but it's it's there. So I'm gonna again add a black mask here. I only want the house to have this, so the actual plaster again, just click here. And there we go. It's subtle, but it adds a difference. What it's all about nice so it's looking very flat in my opinion right it looks there's not a lot of depth in here so i'm gonna change that so first thing though you can see that the color of the wood is really boring so it's almost one color of well wood which is not that interesting so what you can do is you can add a different layer of wood for example on top of this i'm gonna find my wood that i just imported that would be this one yeah yeah i'm just gonna drag it in here and fix the scaling <laughs> by a lot actually this is really nice wood which sounds really weird maybe something like this again in this case though since i've already masked out and I'm, I'm lazy as hell so i'm gonna go to my tree bark here which is my uh, the other roof and then if i click on the actual mask i can actually copy the mask copy mask and I can add a black mask here and then I can paste into mask so you only have to do it once see it has the same mask it's a little bit easier uh, a little bit more efficient then we can start playing around with this so maybe if I want to add like multiply on this on the color just add a little bit more variation here like it does doesn't do that much it's a little bit subtle maybe in like an overlay nah. it's a little bit the roughness though is super rough. I'm gonna lower this down. So 
way too dark, in my opinion. A little better, so you can actually stack materials, which is always a good thing to do, just stack them. Um, and I'm going to show a different trick as well. So I want to add like a blending over here, right? So right now it has, it's this or that. But what if I turn this into its different things? I'm going to grab my tree bark here. I'm going to put it under my other wood. I'm going to find it, go up over here. I'm going to make a new folder because right now these two, all, uh, they have a mask already, right? So we cannot add a mask on a mask. But what we can do though, we can actually put this in a new folder. And then we can add a, uh, add a mask on that folder. So I'm going to copy this mask. I'm going to mask it here. Paste into mask again. And then in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a smart mask. Which adds like dirt, for example. Oh god, don't crash. Like, let's do dirt dry. And I can add that on this. So now you can see, right, it acts a little bit more. You get a little bit more detail here. It looks way more interesting. So if I turn it off, you get meh, and then you add this, you get a little more variation in color, which is really nice. So you can only have you can only have one mask per layer, but of course you can actually put that layer into a uh, folder which you can mask again. And if I want to do it again, I can mask a new folder on top of it as well. So this is a little, little bit cheating, but it's really nice to gain a little more detail. You can also blur your mask if you want to. In this case I don't know, but maybe I can tweak it a little bit. And a little bit more like this. So you can add a little bit more variation. Yeah, maybe I can multiply this, for example, as well. It doesn't work because I also multiply this one here as well. Ooh, that's way too much. Ooh, that doesn't look pretty at all. And if I use overlay, that makes it even worse. I'm going to go back to normal, maybe like lower down a little bit so it's subtle. But it's a really nice way to add. Um, different details of colors on top of each other I'm gonna do the same thing here actually I'm gonna be a little more organized here I'm gonna put all my wood into a new folder wait for it let's see if it doesn't crash would be nice oh god yeah but that's good you need dirt nothing is clean dirt is good so dirt is dirt is good Okay, so let's call this uh, wood. If it's a gap, it's true. So that always makes a little bit of a difference. There you go. So same here for the rocks. I'm going to find my rocks stone here. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it uh, rocks. So I'm going to put it in here. And now this rocks layer already has a mask. So I'm going to copy the mask here. I'm going to put it on the overall uh, group. So add a black mask, paste into mask. Then I'm going to turn this mask off here, so I can like uh, re remove the mask here. Okay, then we're going to find a new stone here as well. So maybe I want to do stone stylized, and I don't know what it is, but it sounds interesting. Let's throw it on there. Now everything that you put into in the folder of the actual um, rocks folder, it will carry that mask with it. So if I turn this off, you get the actual stone here. Yeah, that's not bad. Let's do a little bit higher. There you go, and again you can add a mask on the other objects. I'm gonna go for dirt dusty because it sounds interesting. And you can see it just adds a little bit more detail in, in, in a color texture. Maybe if I set this to multiply, that's more interesting even. Again, you can also change the mask here. I'm gonna change the mask by adding maybe a little bit more balance. You can also like control uh, all if you hold alt and click on the mask, you can actually show the mask. So this is the mask. Maybe then I can a little bit more detail in here, a little bit easier to see. And okay, maybe a little bit more curvature. Okay. And again, let's go back to M and then multiply it a little bit less. There you go. Much better. Cool, actually quite nice. Okay, so rocks done. I'm gonna also folder this as well. I'm gonna make a new folder called roof. Just put this in here and roof. I mean, you don't you don't have to put everything into a layer, but it's just a little bit more easier. So this is the roof roughness. Let's put it in here as well. Make sure it's on top of everything. 
and there was a roof. Beautiful. This is the door. This is called this door. There you go. So the program itself is pretty easy, but you just have to know how to use it, right? Like everything else. Okay. It's pretty okay. Let's see it through all the maps. So this is the base color, height, roughness, metallic. I mean, there is nothing um, metal about the house, right? You could argue that the roof is a little bit metallic. Uh, by adding metallic, you also make it darker. So that, that's why it looks really super dark, which is nice. Then a normal map, normal plus height and mesh, and then the mask. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay, so. Let's get into more some more funky stuff. Right now the house is still clean. It's way too clean for my personal taste. So what I'm gonna do here is on uh, with the layer one here. Oh, let's also make a new layer here. Let's call this bad boy dirt. I'm gonna add a shit ton of dirt. Again, I'm gonna add a generator. I only want to use color in this case. Then I'm gonna add dirt again. I'm gonna invert it. I'm gonna turn on triplanar. And I'm gonna set this one to multiply. And all of a sudden it is super filthy. So without it, meh, poof, dirty. Bit too much though. I'm gonna lower down a little bit. You can also see that by doing it, you add a little bit more depth in the actual texture, which is always good. Let's set it for now a little bit to normal and actually go through the settings here. So this is my dirt mask. And then again, with contrast, you can add a little bit more detail to it or a little bit less detail to it. Uh, you can also change the triplanar amount, but it's not really interesting. So amount of grunge, super amount of grunge, nothing. Let's do, let's find a sweet spot here. You can also change the scale of the grunge. So we like this. Now these ones here, right? These are actually important. So what if I, for example, turn off the curvature? You can see that, that, that all of a sudden it doesn't take in the curvature maps anymore. Oh, I should probably go to my textures here. Curvature. There you go. You can see a difference, right? So the curvature map is, it finds the edges of the actual mesh and uses that as a curvature. In this case, it's over here. The ambient occlusion is the same. And if I turn off the ambient occlusion, right? The same. So these ones are actually really important and you should always have them baked by default. Again, I'm gonna lower down a little bit so it's not that dirty anymore. There you go. Okay. So we're gonna assume, right, this building is somewhere outdoor so it also gets rain and other stuff on it so I'm gonna add a new layer here and I'm gonna go to my particles here and I can actually paint with particles I'm gonna go for rain for example and by just default settings I'm just gonna click somewhere in the viewport doesn't matter where you click though and just hold it and then see it starts raining it might take a while you can also like drag it if you want to create like a rain shower and it will actually add on the assigned layer right now i just only paint in roughness <laughs> so if i go to my roughness here you can actually see the small detail here which is really nice uh, it's super subtle because i use the default setting if i were to undo this and let's do this again i'm going to make it super not rough a little super shiny again i'm going to paint it i'm just going to make it rain let's wait for it i'm just going to hold it for a second or two so the, uh, the time also sets on top left like how long it has been raining in this case 10 seconds let's find it again again this is this is the roughness map now and if i go now here you can see the roof also also because it's super shiny and it has nice detail you can see here right now you get nice detail in it of course it's way over the top so i'm gonna undo this again and find like a middle ground somewhere again i'm gonna make it rain for a second let's wait a little bit and we're done of course you can also change settings here like the, the wind and gravity direction and how long the particles live etc 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 you can go really hardcore into this i'm not gonna do that um for now it's fine this is okay i'm gonna rotate my light again so shift right click hold for the light and then i'm going to do one as well maybe we can also do a liquid stream so usually right especially parts like here you would have like leaking damage so that the rain will actually in here, so I'm gonna go for my leaks heavy. I'm gonna paint on uh, the color mostly. Also, maybe a little roughness, or maybe a little more here. <laughs> or a golden shower, yeah. I'm gonna go for a super dark color here. I'm gonna just gently paint on this. It's not really obvious right now, but once you said the multiply is gonna be a little bit more, so I'm gonna just drag it, right? So, if you just drag it. 
it will actually add like leaking damage here. I'm gonna do the same thing here. It's a little bit not accurate. It's a little bit tedious to paint on it occasionally, but it's good. So leaking damage here is nice. Let's do it here a little bit here as well, like a smidge of leaking. I said multiply. A little bit dark. Now it gets really dirty, right? This is really cool. This is kind of what you want to have. An outdoor building that's really old, so I'm going to add more leaking damage here. Same here, all the way across, I'm just going to hold it. This is a very fast way to make something look very old and filthy. And same thing here. So just let it go and just paint. Just go nuts. Okay, of course it's a little bit too much, so I'm gonna lower down your passing in a bit, but I just want to show you how this works. Super helpful. Okay. Close enough. Again, I'm gonna lower down the opacity a little bit because this <laughs> slightly over the top and it's a little bit lower like this. That's fine. Of course, you can also use like the rain, for example, as well as a mask. So you can actually add like a call in here and actually paint with a mask. But this is quite nice. Again, if you go to the actual call here, you can now see we're actually getting interesting detail. You can tell that, that, that we are now at the point where we start losing qualities. So I'm gonna go to my texture set list. I'm gonna do nothing apparently because I lost everything. Oh, there it is. Sorry. I just wanted to dock it. God damn it. God damn it. Okay. I'm gonna go for 4K here. I'm just gonna save it first before it crashes. Probably sounds like a good idea. Let's do save as. Yeah. I'm just gonna save it somewhere. Sure. Let's save it. So I, now if I were to upgrade my size, it will actually um, recalculate all the textures and all the things that are, that are procedural. And you will see an increase in, qu in quality. So I'm gonna let it go for a second. You can see here that's going, it's going. It's gonna take a while. Ah, uh, well, like 10 seconds, probably. Oh yeah, so if you get this message over here, right the bottom left, uh, enough, uh, not enough data in the high poly to use like the baker, you don't care, right? If it's if it's yellow, it's it's warning, it's, not, it's okay. So for those who are also a programmer, Warnings are bad, but not the end of the world in this case. You don't care either. It's it's if it's red not pay attention if it's yellow like nah. Could be worse Let me just wait And we should see a dramatic increase in texture quality once it is done if ever Because it is it's now it's gonna gonna rebake everything here as well, so it's gonna Take a little bit longer to do this, but still, it's not super long in theory. So, almost done. Uh oh, it doesn't crash now. It's not crashing. This is this is always the best part of watching a video. Uh, just. Looking at the same screen and just monitoring the <laughs> progression bar. That's just always that's always what you want to see. Almost done. Exciting. It's like so exciting. In, in the newest version you can go up to 8k textures but it's way over the top uh, in, in my opinion you know you will never need it unless you want to do a movie um you will never never use 8k textures it's just a waste of space and what was that right hope you, hope you saw the difference <laughs> hope you did i'm gonna go back here you can see now the roof also become a little bit more uh, neat especially this part of here the 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 written duck roof i don't know what's called Get a little bit more detail, especially here with the rain damage as well. I think it's a little bit more high detail, so it actually does matter though. Uh, but it also depends on what you're going to use for the actual. Uh, what's it going to be used for? So I mean, if this is a building that's far in the distance, you will never use a 4K texture. 
uh, if you get like up close and personal here like this then you kind of want to use a high resolution texture but then you also want to use a level of detail system but that's a different story altogether so it's not it's not bad though um, usually though what you all see when you walk around uh, in an actual environment right did you get like splash damage here on the ground from raining when it rains you get the rain that splashes back up so you can add here a new fill layer a simple trick here I'm gonna add a new fill layer and, oh, and I only want to use color again so I'm gonna grab a black color I just don't care about anything else maybe also a little bit of roughness in here like super not rough maybe a little bit more metallic as well so if I now mix a little bit more metallic it's gonna be a lot darker so I kinda wanna have like a super dark color here so I'm gonna cheat like hell so I'm gonna go for this one and then I'm gonna go to my smart masks again I'm gonna go for the grounder I'm just gonna drag it on there it's gonna add it in theory there it is it's just super dark way over the top so I want to change a couple of things here I'm gonna to go to my mask editor here first the height is wrong so I'm gonna go here and position gradient a little bit lower so it's actually gonna lower down the dirt maybe a little bit higher a little bit higher there you go also for the grunge map it's way too big so I'm gonna go up I'm gonna scale it up a little bit more that's better same here I think we can also go here just touch to your here oh come on, come on, come on. of course you can also like do by ratio if you want to or the balance this might be a little bit better a little bit more oof too much let's lower it again so it's a it's a play right if I can find it again position green there it is a little bit less there you go there again I'm gonna set it to multiply here I'm gonna load on your passy of a lot so you get nice dirt uh, where the actual building meets the ground it should always be dirty always dirty er er okay one more trick it's really good actually um get a new fill layer only color again I'm gonna find my textures I'm gonna use my emmy occlusion I'm just gonna drag it in here and it's going to add a little bit more depth to the overall building so with it without it it just adds a little bit more depth which is i really like which i always add this and it gets a little bit more dimension and feel to it oh actually i should probably so this is the ground right you can see it also adds on the window i don't want this so i'm going to do the same trick here i'm going to add a new layer here i'm going to put this bad boy in here I'm only gonna add a black mask on the actual building or we can actually do it like this right so I'm gonna grab faces just make a box selection here everything that's lower and then I'm gonna unmask the actual windows here because I don't want it to be that dirty there you go pretty okay it's not perfect yet but we're getting there I think it's a little bit too saturated but it's fine for now so so you can all check here what, what actually looks like in the game so I'm gonna go to my view over here this is the viewer display settings I'm gonna turn on shadows for a second if I get a little bit more I'm gonna go for intensive let's do this so I can get a little bit more an idea what it looks like when a shadow on the object because that changes everything not bad to be honest not bad okay I'm also gonna see what it actually holds up how it holds up in different lighting conditions so I'm gonna click here on my panorama and then I'm gonna find a different one so I, I just usually go through all of them to see what they look like in different lighting conditions so this looks pretty okay let's do this one here as well you might want to adjust a few here uh, here and there but this is quite nice as well to be honest let's do the bus garage this one is nice so you just want to see if it holds up in every lighting condition in this case it does pretty well in my opinion it's not perfect though but because usually you spend like a full day on texturing one single object right now I've done it in less than an hour but it's, it's okay over the clouds this is a big one oh I should rotate it there it is go down here you also have to feel on Nova Street which is more like a sunset which is always really nice 
Yeah, this is pretty good. So I'm gonna go, go back to my panorama. I'm gonna turn off shells again. Let's continue. So it's still not dirty enough, <laughs> in my opinion. It needs to be uh, even more dirt. So this is the ground dirt. This is my dirt dirt, overall dirt, or this M occlusion. And this is my dirt, right? So I'm gonna go under here. I'm gonna call it one second. So I'm gonna call this dirt. Otherwise, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Ground dirt, uh, ambient occlusion. I don't know what this is. Oh, this is probably my leaking damage. Oh god, I should not have done that. Okay, I think this is my leaking damage. But for now, it's good. Okay. So I'm gonna add a material here. I'm gonna find my dirt. This is a, um, a spot material which will add dirt, which I call dirt. I'm gonna add it above here. And it's going to actually add dirt. Oh, you'll see in a minute. There it is. Dirt. Way too much, of course. But especially for like the bottom part of the house, it's really cool. So I'm going to open this. Let's say it's multiply for a second. You can just. That's dirty. It's beautiful. Let's open this up. This is the dirt base. I said this one to multiply this one as well. Maybe like lower it down a little bit so it's not over the top. And then you can start adding in, uh, tweaking a little bit more here. So I'm gonna maybe like change the scale here. Um, let's see what this actually does. Not that much. Let's do the mask editor again. And then let's see if we can add a little bit more disorder, is always good. We should also like mask this again. So I'm gonna. All my fold itself, I'm gonna add a black mask. I'm gonna grab the polygon fill again. I'm just gonna grab the bottom part here because I don't know. Oh, I should probably use white because I don't know how dirt like mud would get up in the actual building, so that would be kind of cool. Maybe here. No, let's not do this. Let's do like this part of here. That's kind of cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, let's go to the color, right? You just want to be interesting. So, I, and I just um, cycle through all these uh, channels nonstop. I do it all the time just to see how everything holds up. So, I just want to see, like, is the um, roughness map nice and detailed? It's, it's base color nice and detailed. Um, it's high detailed. I just want to see, like, is, is there enough noise in there to make things interesting? But this time it look pretty okay again. So let's see what else we can add. I want to add moss, right? Since this is outdoor and this is wood, I want to add moss. I'm going to find, do I have a moss texture? I think I do have somewhere. The mm, for moss. I don't have moss. I thought I had moss. Hmm, I don't have moss. That's weird. Don't I have moss? I think I can do like this as well. So I'm gonna add a new layer here. Uh, I just want moss, moss solid. There it is. Okay, so this will be way more tiling. This is good. Okay, then we're gonna again add a smart mask here. You have actual moss, moss masks. This is really word difficult word to say. <laughs> moss masks so you have the from uh, moss from above you also have moss itself so i'm going to add moss here just itself and it's going to fill up the cracks of the building in theory this looks stupid but it gives a nice impression right so i want to keep it everywhere but i'm going to lower down way a lot i just want to have like a smidge of green in here if i go back to my color here color 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 I just want it to be subtle, right? I just want to be there, but like, oh yeah, there's moss as well. A little bit more, I can input here as well. I'm gonna go for like 10. A little bit more interesting, there it is. I don't want to be over the top, but I just want it to be visible. Ah, it's okay. Let's save this real fast. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Saving. Okay, 
so what for example right you have a decal which is an image that you can paint with so what for example you want to add like a, uh, a blood spatter here the first thing you have to do is actually find a decal so i'm gonna quickly find a decal of, i should have them somewhere let me just find them real fast uh, i had them Let's just find a couple of blots. Yeah, so I got one here. So I'm gonna drag it in here. I'm gonna drag a texture. So this is texture. So I just gonna drag it in here and I find it as a texture. Just wanna do it for the current session and uh, import it. So you can find it here right now. N nice blood splatter. And I wanna paint this texture on my object. Uh, so I'm gonna add a new layer here. And then I'm gonna show you how to do this. Um, so I don't know if you see it over here. So this is the projection one and then you can actually drag in your texture here I only want this one so I'm gonna drag my texture and I can paint this texture on the actual object you also could make it a little bit smaller if I will S you can actually change the scale of it or again if I S well it's sussy right so if I wanna hold left click I can rotate it I can also pan it if I want to so S left click Rotate F, right click, zoom, F, minimum S, minimum click, you can pan it. I want to make it a little bit less, and then we can start painting on this. So let's add it here so you get this bad boy over here. Of course, it will uh, texture the entire texture, so also if something that's white will be added. Let's do our door as well, because it's kind of cool. I'm going to rotate this. It doesn't make any sense, but let's do it like this. And there you go. Again, I'm going to hit my standard brush and then I'm gonna change the setting here. I think if I do multiply, there it is. Now it's blood on the walls. That's really cool. It's fucked up, it's awesome. So you can also use a physical projection. It's a little bit more difficult, but it does the same thing. But then you actually paint with textures, like this. There's a lot of issues with this. Ooh, God. I should not have done this, I think. <laughs> Shit. Okay. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good. So and then it spawns sparkles from that actual image. It's really weird. Uh, it's funky. I don't use it that often. Um, like almost never. You can also use physical paint here as well. So you actually can paint with particles here. So I'm going to make a new layer to show, show you how that works. So you have a default emitter. You can have like rain, for example, or spray. I'm going to go for... Bah spray here and then receiver and you can actually use like algae let's do algae and then you can paint on it by just using the brush and that's it's then it's going to physically calculate the actual behavior of it and add it i don't think i've actually painted anything i just painted roughness i'm going to undo this i'm going to get a color here so you can see what happens make it a little bit smaller though and i'm going to paint on it so you can see what happens here right so i'm going to paint here real fast super slow though and then you can see that it actually starts living its own life and create this interesting structure so it's actually really cool for, for creating like organic um, textures like this for example you can also of course change it again so in this case i'm gonna go for let's do a rain here now as well see what happens here it's already has difficulty with it right now so i just clicked on it see what happens so this is downside also downside of painting in 4k it can be super slow i think it's gonna crash in a little bit oh, is it not it's not i'm gonna un delete this real fast hope to god enough it's gonna change it's gonna crash it's so gonna crash that's the downside of using five uh, 4k textures and physical paint it's like begging for trouble still works though for some reason funnily enough anyway so you can actually paint with decals it's a little bit easier um, if you want to get really fancy you can actually make your own, own PNGs or images that has opacity for example uh, Targa files or TGA or open EXR or PNG you can actually like paint that object exactly on this one over here so you can add like smiley here if you want to I don't know why you want to do that but you could um, so let's go back here and let's go back to the brushes so by default right you have a couple of brushes here that you can use there's also uh, self to download for free also on share.substance.com i definitely suggest you check that out what's it i don't know what's doing but 
I think it's a broke substance painter. Awesome. Anyway, I'm just gonna show you how to export this. If it's actually always oh, doing something. Ooh, what's it doing? What's happening? Oh, oh god. Something is happening. Don't know what. <laughs> Super slow. I'm so scared right now. There's so much issues. I know. I I I have done did it. It's still working though for some reason. I don't know how, but it's still working. It's still operating. Let's see if I can do this actually. So let's do export textures. Cool, it actually works. It actually works. Whew. So, in here you can find your texture sets. So the one that you're here as well, that you baked in the beginning. You can still change the size that you want to export it as. So you can you can experimentally try 8K. So it will actually um, upscale everything back into an 8K texture or downscale here if you want to. You can use the configuration here again, how to export it. Now, I, I've made several of my own. Um, but the defaults one are good, so the exit now also has the Unity HD rendering pipeline for those who want to use Unity, and also has the Unity subsurface scattering as well. Of course, you can also make your own one, so you can go to configuration and you can add a new one over here. And let's call this, uh, I don't know what to call this yet, but oh god, have I done it? No, okay. So it has no output maps right now, so you need to say, okay, I want to add a channel here with RGB, then you can just click on RGB and it adds it. And then you can say, okay, which one of the maps do I want actually want to use there? So in this case, you should give a name, but you can actually, oh, whew, it didn't crash. <laughs> so in this case, I want to use my base color, for example, I can drag it in here in the RGB slot and just save for RGB channels. And then this one will now be loaded in here. Uh, important note that you have base color and diffuse still, it's pretty much the same, but use base color. Uh, a normal map also is RGB, so you can also drag the units here as well. So RGB, oh, wrong one, sorry. RGB, normal, drag it in here, RGB channels. Now, metallic is a grayscale image, but you can actually do something sexy with this. So you can also add your roughness channel into your metallic channels alpha channel. I know. So I can drag in here my metallic, right, in here. I can say get gray channel. Then I can also add my roughness in the actual alpha channel here. So one image now has two different texture sets. So one has the metallic one and one has the alpha one. Now this is really cool. You can actually go even further. You can actually also you go here. So you can also say, okay, I want to add an RGB separate files or an RGBA. So I can add my metallic in the R channel. I can add the roughness in the green channel. I can add my M occlusion, for example, in the blue channel. And then I can also add, let's see, what else do we have? Let's do the height in the alpha channel, right? So you can actually have four different maps in one single image. It's same for the Unity HDRP rendering pipeline here. You can see right the mask map. It has the metallic in the R channel, the roughness in the or occlusion in the green channel, the blending mask in the grayscale and the in the in the blue channel, and I think the glossiness in the off channel. So you have four different maps in one single channel. It's super sexy. It's really efficient actually. So don't be afraid to make your own one. I'm gonna delete this one real fast. So I've made one here as well. In this case, I just up, open everything separately, or if yeah, I just pick one that you actually want to use. Unreal does the same thing here. Firay, Fear, Udim, doesn't really matter. And then once you've done it, you just click on export or say say where you want to do this in. You can also uh, check the output image format. So you can say I want to go for an open EXR, which is really sexy but it's super big or a BMP, I don't know why you would ever use that, or JPEG, that just means you're an idiot, so don't use that either. You can say, okay, I wanna use a 16-bit. It's cool, right? You add a little bit more detail um, to the texture, but it's hardly noticeable. If, if you can actually know the difference between 8-bit and 16-bit, then you are a genius, and you should be the god of all uh, texture nerds ever. There's, there's no visible uh, difference. The only thing you can do is a little bit more post-processing on it uh, in this case it's not really important so I'm just gonna not do it so this is how you do it again 
Um, say, I want to do one more thing and then we're going to call it a day. Say, for example, you do want to paint with alpha channels. So you want to actually have like the glass to be transparent. I'm going to show you how to do this. So in my texture set settings, this one, I can add the opacity channel here. So opacity, the uh, opacity here. It's now added and now I can actually paint opacity channels. It's going to reload everything. A little bit of patience as usual. Patience, patience, there it is. So I can add a new channel here. I'm gonna add a new fill layer here for speed sake. I'm gonna turn off everything except for opacity. And I'm gonna make it black. So now everything should be transparent, right? But I can still see everything. It makes sense because we are currently using a shader which does not support alpha or opacity. So I'm gonna to go to my shader settings here. I'm gonna click on PBR Metal Rough. Then if you go down here, you'll find one that actually has alpha test. So if I click on it now, everything's gone, right? But if I go back up here, then it's actually all of a sudden it pops, pops back. Because alpha test just means it's either visible or invisible, and there's no in between. So it's either there or it's invisible, right? So that's alpha test. So that's amazing for like uh, foliage or like leaves on trees or hair. It's amazing for if, but if you want to use like like subtle differences in opacity you need to go back to your shader settings here and use the alpha blending one it's this one and then you can see everything comes transparent so now you can actually play a little bit more with the transparency of the object so fully transparent and pff, all the way gone so this is how you use, how you would paint glass like i'm gonna paint here a little bit of transparency here on the actual glass in this case it's awful so i'm not gonna do this and i want to be efficient these ones here as well, you can use the Adobe Dimension shader. I don't know what it is, or the clay shader, which is kind of cool, but it's just, I don't know. The Dota 2 shader, it just adds a lot of contrast and a lot of reflection. Lens Studio, I don't know what they all mean. I don't use them. Car paint, PBR coated, you can actually add a coat layer on this. You don't wanna, it's not really that important to be honest. You just wanna use by default the PBR Metal Rough, this one. If you want to use opacity, then use the one with the PBR metal uh, blending or the alpha test for so this one. And everything else is for a whole different setting, a whole different day. If you want to do, if you want to read into subsurface scattering, I've got a uh, video about skin texturing, which actually covers the subsurface scattering part of the equation, which is interesting for those who are interested in that kind of stuff. And for now, I'm just going to say thank you for joining in. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and uh, I will see you again soon. I might do a live stream Friday about Unity. Maybe a little bit C-sharp, I don't know yet, but I'm just thinking about it. I'll probably do something in, in Unity. So yeah, I'm gonna say have a good night. Don't drink too much. And we'll see you again soon.